What do you get when you cross the keen eye of an eagle, the grim determination of a bulldog, a healthy dose of logic and reason, and a hide thicker than the skull of any feminist? If you're interested in an extended discussion of any of the concepts introduced in this video, please click the I in the top right corner or wait till the video link at the end. This is HBR Talk with Hannah Wallen. Last week on HBR Talk, Allison, Karen, and I described and discussed what got us involved with the men's rights movement, how we met on Reddit, and what characteristics contributed to our choice to team up. We got you as far as the first of two incidents that helped us identify a need in the community, women who could approach men's issues discussion without occupying a standpoint that begins with blaming and shaming men, without occupying a gynocentric standpoint to make ourselves heard. This isn't needed due to any importance of women's opinions on men's issues. On the contrary, the rightful authority on the needs of men and boys, their human rights considerations, and the legal and social issues surrounding those considerations, is men. Last week I pointed out that there will always be women sticking their noses into this movement. As I said before, that's partly because women are busybodies by nature. It's also partly because, within their own families, and among their friends and colleagues, Women are going to see examples of men's issues, and there will be some, at least, who recognize the need for reform and are inspired to speak out and engage in further activism. I also pointed out that there are two camps of women who will involve themselves in the men's rights movement, those who will do the normal female thing of entering a male-dominated area and deciding it has to be changed to suit their attitudes and sensibilities, and those who will deal with the environment as it is, the issues as they stand, and the unadulterated nature of what activism is needed. The latter camp is needed in order to prevent the former from turning the men's rights movement into he for she. There really is a third camp. Those who openly like the status quo, who see the men's rights movement as a threat to it, and who will fight tooth and nail to shame us into silence. That is an area of female power that is entrenched in our society's perspective on and response to gender issues. Women who eschew gynocentrism can cut through that shaming. We are the antidote to dismissal of men's complaints as whining, to accusations that said complaints are misogynistic, and to derailing by other women who want to redirect the conversation back to women's issues, back to that gynocentric outlook. We didn't grow up being told, like boys, to defer to girls, respect women, and cater to female sensibilities, and that makes it easier to both see through and overcome pressure to follow those rules. Because of this, non-gynocentric women have the power to break down the barrier that gynocentric women's sensibilities represent to the legal and social reform sought by the men's rights movement. This difference also provides us with a perspective from which to add to the information and language used by the men's rights movement to understand and articulate the issues faced by men and boys. In terms of how female power and female attitudes impact these issues, there are times when it is easier for women to identify the mechanisms behind the issues. I've heard that described by friends in the movement in a lot of ways, but I think the person who really hit the nail on the head is Allison. To paraphrase her, sometimes it takes a woman to see through other women's shit. To build on that, what the movement very often needs from women is that we get that shit out of the way so that it does not hinder the human rights work that needs to be done. And that, in a nutshell, is where and how we started to work together. When my friend Roger's ex-wife stabbed his niece's dog, Family court finally issued a restraining order against her, but police refused to enforce it. Roger's ex-wife filed blatantly false charges, got caught lying to police, perjured herself, and even stalked him and his witnesses, all while a biased court turned a blind eye. It took myself and a whole team of his other friends working together around the clock to protect him from further false accusations and to put a stop to her abuse. Roger wasn't the first male friend I'd had who experienced a court system slanted against men. Jason was convicted of assault strictly because his ex said she was scared of him. 
Mark, because a judge thought stopping a woman from stabbing him in the throat was abusive. Steve spent a weekend in jail for non-payment of child support because of a caseworker's typo. My friend Roger wasn't a wake-up call for me. He was the last straw. Witnessing false accusations against friends in multiple jurisdictions in multiple counties made it obvious that this was an area of systematic institutionalized discrimination against men, one that blindsides them all too often with life-wrecking force. I learned the importance of documentation, of seeing through and exposing false framing and other forms of deceit, encountering victim narratives used to disguise glaring fabrications as legitimate complaints. I sought out men's rights forums to share the tools I had seen work against false accusations, and soon realized that the false accusations I witnessed are a symptom of a larger, broader pattern of lies. Men stand wrongly accused of the ill-defined crimes of patriarchy, of privilege, and of toxicity. Spurious, distorted narratives created in women's name are used to push for a corrupt system that, intentionally or not, helps liars destroy men by stripping all men of a presumption of innocence. I want to provide you, our listeners, with the tools to fight back against those distorted narratives and the abuses they are used to support. I want to arm men against the lies used to dehumanize and demonize them. Most of all, I want men to be able to assert their own truth without fear that it will be buried under the rubble of society-wide false accusations. Ask yourself if that's something you'd like to see more of. Ask yourself if you'd like to support my efforts in arming fighters. And if your answer is yes, please go to www.feedthebadger.com support Hannah. Thank you.